Next, tragedy strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. This is 911. Do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911. Then, over a ton of shattered glass buries a factory worker alive. I think he's gonna die right there. On Rescue Even though some jobs pose very real dangers, it's hard to believe that anything bad will ever happen to us or those we care about. But on December 23, 1991, Richard Adams and the employees at a factory in Wilsonville, Oregon, were reminded just how real those dangers can be. We've taken free fall sheets of glass that are 102 inches tall by 130 inches long. We just push them over onto an air table. It'll cut any size. Richard Adams had worked in the glass cutting department for nearly five years. They can break at any time. I've seen a lot of those happen. I've had them come down on top of me before. It's a dangerous occupation. The lead man that shift was Kevin Smith. The glass is very sharp, sharper than a razor blade. I've heard about people being cut in half. And it'll, it'll cut you just by looking at it. The glass comes from the manufacturer in 10 foot long cases that weigh nearly two tons. Hey, Craig. I asked Craig, I said, well, why don't you go back and open up another case? And he just said, okay, no problem, just like we do a hundred times, you know, all the time. Plant manager Larry Henry noticed a commotion on the floor of the factory. People were scrambling, and I immediately knew something was wrong. I'll get the boom. When I found him, he was still conscious, and he was reaching his arms underneath the case and trying to lift it off of himself. He was trying to lift 3,000 pounds off of himself. And so then he just turned white and passed out. Call for help sent units with the Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue heading to the scene. I knew instantly we, we had to get that glass off Craig. And if we didn't, we didn't have that glass off of him, by the time the paramedics arrived, he wasn't going to make it. My biggest concern was keeping that other pack of glass from falling down on top of everybody. That would cut somebody in two falling from that, that high of a distance. Within five minutes of the call, rescue units arrived at the factory. I was worried about what they were going to find when they did unbury him. I thought at that point that I wouldn't have him as a friend anymore. Among the rescuers who responded was paramedic Gene Ditter. He was not breathing and he had no pulse. At that time is when we actually put lifelight on standby. Hey, we got that other bottle of oxygen. Paramedic Tom Duffy administered CPR. We were very concerned because when you have a trauma patient that, that doesn't have a pulse or isn't breathing, uh, statistically, less than one in 100 patients will survive. And uh, we really felt that uh, 
there was very little chance that we would be able to resuscitate Craig. I was scared. It, it just seemed to me that he wasn't going to make it. I'd never seen anything like that up close and personal, especially to a good friend. This was two days before Christmas. That's the sad part. impaled by a tree limb, a tragic spring break car crash, a road rage gunshot victim. Medics in Orlando count on miracles and medicine to save lives. Trauma, life in the ER. Friday on Discovery Health Channel. Let's check for a pulse again, guys. Let's see if we've got anything. His chances of survival are probably very slim, but after looking at the expression on the, on the co-worker's face and everything, we felt that we needed to give it our best shot, not only for Craig, but for the co-workers. Check for a pulse there, Scott. When Life Flight arrived on the scene, the victim had been without a pulse for nearly eight minutes. The flight nurse brought some medications in so we could get him intubated. Okay. Come on, Nothing. Craig. You're gonna make it. Once we got him intubated, and that, then we felt that we had a good airway. And then at that point, his pulse started to come back a little bit more. It was very faint, but at least we had a pulse. Craig's wife, Jean, was at home when she received word of the accident. Oregon Glass called me and told me that his his leg was was cut. And then a few minutes later, they called me back up and told me that he was going to be life flighted to the hospital. And I knew then it was bad. Craig Hoffman was admitted to Oregon Health Sciences University Hospital in critical condition and put under the care of surgeon Donald Trunke. We suspected that it was pretty severe because of the uh, incredible crush injury that you would get from 4,000 pounds of glass. My major concerns at that time was whether or not he had fatal damage to the brain because he wasn't able to breathe during that time. Hey, Jesus, look at this film. We thought it was a very grim prognosis. There really had never been any signs of you know, conscious life at the scene. And we certainly didn't see that in the emergency room. But you can't, you, can't, uh, you can't give up at this point in time because you don't know. Once Craig was out of surgery, his wife and father finally got to see him. It was the hardest thing for me to go in and see him all hooked up in tubes and wires coming in, in and out of his body. The doctor told us he would have brain damage, um, some inter internal injuries, um, broken ribs and broken bones throughout his body. But remarkably, as the days passed, Craig began to improve. I love you too, hon. The paramedics and the people at the scene did an incredible job. And so I think if any credit is due, it's to, to the people at the scene. Fantastic job. Craig was hospitalized for two and a half weeks. Nine months later, he has completely recovered from his injuries. I can honestly say I really wasn't scared. But I said a quick little prayer as I was jumping out of the way, and that's about all I remember until uh, New Year's Day. Somebody said, Happy New Year's. I was wondering what happened to Christmas. <laughs> I felt fantastic when I found out he was going to make it and he was going to be okay. And here, six months later, he's back on the job, doing a little different work, but he's back on the job. 
I feel like I'm real lucky to be alive, and I do believe it was a miracle that I am alive. I had a lot of people praying for me. And I would like to thank them for praying for me. It's a hard way to find out who your friends and people that love you are. We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life, medicine, miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.